this is my rock li z1 extreme i'll be showing you my eq settings and then i'll be showing you what each setting does and then i'll also show you a trick to stop the stuttering audio that you get when playing at a low tdp like 10 watts and below let's begin so first of all this is the dolby access app this and as far as i'm aware every rock li comes with this installed i use a custom one so here it is then you can see I have my surround virtualizer turned on and the volume leveler is turned off. So originally, as far as I'm aware, I think it's either in dynamic or game mode, which does have a performance mode. But still, even with the performance mode on, last time I checked, you still get lots of stuttering audio if you play at 10 watts or below. So this isn't actually that useful. Now you want to know how to stop the stuttering. So to do that, you just go over here to more settings and you turn off Dolby Atmos effects because this app is actually a bit CPU intensive. So it will eat up resources. And of course, if you're running at low wattages like 10 watts, then there's not really much power to go around. So that's why you get the stuttering audio. But honestly, if you play it at above 10 watts, I don't see any reason to turn this off. So now let me give you an audio demonstration of my EQ preset compared to the default. So here we've got Ridge Ratio 7 running. Okay, so I hope you did hear a bit of a difference between the between the defaults like the flat curve and the custom one that I made. So for me personally, in real life, the main difference that I can tell comes in with the bass, the lower frequencies, because now things like bass guitars, drums, all of that sounds a lot more full and rich with my EQ profile compared to the default one. So yeah, it sounds pretty good. In fact, I'd say it almost matches up with the speakers on my $1,000 macbook air so pretty good honestly especially since i only paid about 400 for this one used okay so let's say that you are confused with this graph and you don't understand what's going on how do you make your own eq profile well it's actually relatively simple so the left side is like low frequencies like this one while the right one is more high frequencies like this like a t -t -t -t. this is t -t -t. this is uh, you get it so this area over here is the sub bass. Unfortunately, the Ally speakers don't really have a strong sub bass. So that's why I haven't turned all the way up to the top. This next one is a lot more noticeable. Actually, it's also bass. I also turn that one up. And then this one's also somewhere around bass. Then over here is where you get the mids. Mids is where a lot of sounds are. Like let's say people talking is the mid frequencies. Personally, I don't mess around with these much because in my opinion, uh, if they go too far to the extremes, they tend to make the audio sound uh, a lot worse. Then the ones here towards the right, these ones are the high frequencies. Now you can turn these up higher if you want to. In fact, you can make your rough go like this, like a V curve. A lot of people love to do that, like in a car sound system or just with headphones in general. But the issue is, I find that if I turn these up too high, then my ears will get fatigued if I play for too long. So that's why I don't like to turn up these high frequencies. Unfortunately, if you accidentally mess something up like that, there is no way to restore the previous EQ settings. So what I've done is I've taken a screenshot, back button, and A, so that I always have a copy. Surround Virtualizer, if you've ever heard of Dolby Atmos, this is essentially the same software. It will try to create a virtual surround sound, because in order to create a true surround sound experience, you'd need something like a 5.1 or a 7.1 setup which means you'll have like a speaker at the front, one at the side, another one at the back, like behind your head, another one behind your head. But not everyone has a, a theater style setup at their house. And of course, the Rock Ally can't have speakers hanging behind it. So instead, because it only has two speakers, it basically tries to create a, a fake version of surround sound. Now, even my MacBook over here does do something similar, which in my opinion, it actually works quite well. Like if you listen to like 3D surround sound stuff, it actually sounds pretty good. So with the Rock Ally specifically, this does make a difference. I'd say it's only about maybe 5 to 10% difference. But sometimes if it's like a song, a good song or a good game, then the surround sound effect can actually feel very like real. Like the sound is actually coming from behind your ears. So I just keep that on. 
then you have a volume leveler. So basically, when you're playing audio, I'll just use this thing actually from the Dolby website. So sometimes the audio will be loud, sometimes it'll be quiet, right? And the difference between the loud sound and the quiet sound is what we call dynamic range. So have you ever watched a movie where the explosions are loud, but then when they get to the talking sections, it sounds like you can barely hear the conversation. That is what happens when the people who mix the audio use the big dynamic range. So what the volume level that does is it tries to minimize the difference between the loudest part and the quietest part so that, you know, the volume is more consistent over the movie or game or music that you're listening to. In my experience, when it comes to playing games on this thing, I've never had a problem with like the, the loud stuff and the quiet stuff being like being there too big of a difference. So I just turn it off. Okay. But let's say you are listening to a movie where the speaking is too quiet, then you can turn this on, but I just leave it off. If you have any other questions, then let me know in the comments.